GHS 
Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the things you've been teaching us this month in particular. How we can get into your blessings. Our lives can be enriched by heaven's supply. We pray so because we are together again today to listen to you and to see what your spirit has for us. And Father, we are asking that you will grant us the spirit of understanding so that what we are hearing be meaningful and applicable to our lives in Jesus' name. And we are praying that according to your late damp plans, your blessings will be abundant in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. I'm reading to you from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 25 and 26. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down at a season. There shall be showers of blessing. As we progressively go through the way to prepare for the coming year, we we'll come to this passage and this message today. I want to talk to you on showers of blessing. In this passage, the Lord himself spoke of the showers. And he said, he will cause the showers to come down. And then he said, there will be showers of blessing. At that time, God himself saw the conditions of the people. Ezekiel described the condition. Jeremiah described the condition at a later time. Or an earlier time. Isaiah described the condition. And a lot of the prophets described the conditions of the children of Israel. In Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it at all. But wounds and bruises and fortifying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. God saw the condition of the children of Israel at this particular time. It was deplorable. They were sick, weak, they were fearful, suffering and hungry, they were helpless, they were weary, oppressed, abused, molested. And in that condition, God spoke to his servant in Ezekiel chapter 34, reading from verse 4. The diseased, have you not strengthened, talking to the many shepherds in Israel, talking to the many religious leaders in Israel, neither have ye healed that which was sick? Neither have ye bound up that which was broken? Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away? Neither have ye sought that which was lost? But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them? In that single verse you will see the condition that God saw. That the people were sick. The people were broken. The people were scattered away, scattered about. The people were lost and they were ruled with cruelty. There was great oppression. And it was scattered because there is no shepherd. 
and they became meat to all the beasts of the field. When they were scattered, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search after them. It was in that condition that God himself said he was going to help them and bless them. And from Isaiah, together with all the other prophets, many promises have been given to bless the people and to bring a new refreshing time unto them. The same conditions apply today. There are many people that are so discouraged and fearful of the future. They are oppressed, they are molested, and they suffer, they are hungry, they are helpless. And in this condition, the Lord is also giving us the same promises that He gave before. Because He says, I am God, I change not. His heart of love is still reaching out unto people, wanting to bless. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. I told you already that we are looking forward, looking ahead to the coming year. Preparing for blessings of prosperity and success in the coming year. And yet God himself said, new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. And in verse 16, he declares some of the new things they will do in the near future to the children of Israel and to the people of God today. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness become light before them. And crooked things, church, these things will I do unto them and not forsake them. In Isaiah chapter 43, he again emphasized that he was going to bless them with new blessings that they never knew. Isaiah 43 verse 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. In Isaiah chapter 48, verses 6 and 7, Thou hast heard, see all this, and will not ye declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou did, didst not know them. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day, when thou heardest them not, lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. God was telling the children of Israel that was going to do new things they had never known, they had never seen. And they will not be able to say, Yes, I saw that before. I knew that before. Everything will be entirely new. And God said, they will be created now. And the same thing is telling us, as we look ahead, going into this new year, that He will give us blessings that are new, blessings that are fresh. And we will not be able to say, we knew that before. We saw that before. They will be entirely new. And yet, as we prepare, we need to know the mind of God. There are many people that have often encouraged themselves, saying that blessing was coming, and eventually blessing did not come, because they did not fully look into the desires and the plan of God. But we should read the whole world. You know, sometimes when you find some religious people, they read what they think is a good, good part of the word of God, the blessings. And they never read the condition, how the blessings will come upon them. The same thing for the children of Israel. Many times the prophets will speak to them and God will say, through those prophets I will do a new thing. I will do mighty things among the children of Israel. But then they will not see the conditions that God himself was giving out. But I'm going to tell you the whole truth. That's why I'm teaching teaching you on these three points number one, hindrances to blessings there are hindrances we mustn't deceive ourselves we are expecting great things from the Lord but there could be walls of partition 
We are expecting mighty things from the Lord, but there could be blockages in the pipeline. We are expecting that the coming year will be wonderful. Filled with blessing, riches from above. But there could be things that will block the blessing, block the way of the blessing from coming to us. That's why I'm talking on hindrances to blessings. If you are wise, you will take the word of God to heart. You will know the prophets of those days. They told the children of Israel. They told the people of God. These will be the hindrances. These will be the hindrances. Those that listen to the warning. Those that listen. And they saw that those hindrances will actually hinder them. And they went the way of the Lord. The Lord blessed them. But those that said no, blessings will come. Whether we kill or steal. Whether we are rebellious or stubborn, doesn't matter. Blessings will come. You know what happened? They were disappointed. And I'm praying for you. That you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. So point one. Hindrances to blessings. Point two. Help for believers. I've discovered that believers need help. To be able to get the best from God. To have the new things that God says they will do. We need help. And point three. Hope at Bethel. Bethel means... The house of God. Or oh, we'll come to that point, you'll see how the blessing was promised right from Bethel. And the blessings from Bethel, the promises from Bethel, the covenant that God made with Jacob at Bethel went throughout life with him. There is hope at Bethel in the house of God. Come back to number one, point one. Hindrances to blessings. When God had said, Behold, I will make a covenant of peace with the people. And then he has said, I will bless them. I will pour abundant blessings upon them. What are the things that will hinder those blessings from coming, up, from coming upon us? In Psalm 66. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. This man was being sincere. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. There are many people that go to church and every Sunday they confess sin, but they never forsake them. And if you listen to them, they will say, Lord, we have come to confess. They have never said, we have come so that we can forsake. God is not interested in confession of sin. If it is not followed through and followed up with forsaking of that sin. And there are many people and God is fed up with those religious people that will just come every Sunday and say, we confess that we have sinned against heaven, against you, against our neighbors. But they never say we are forsaking all the sins we are confessing. Confession alone will not make it. Confession alone will not bring the blessing of God. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And how many of those people confess every Sunday and they go back after that church service to do the same old evil thing they have confessed. They confess they stole before they go ahead to steal. They confess they committed fornication before they go ahead they commit fornication again. They confess they have been smuggling before they go ahead and they smuggle again. They confess they have been wicked. They go ahead and they are wicked again. They confess they do not forsake. But God is not interested in just confession of sin. He is interested in forsaking that sin. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's the problem of many people. They continue in sin. And you know sometimes, there are people that have been coming here for a long, long time. And miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. We touch the sick, they get healed. We look at the oppressed, just looking at them, they get delivered. And then we pray, standing in authority, and we give the command of faith. And their problems are solved, their debts are paid, their mountains are removed. And there are people that come in our midst. And they keep coming, and keep coming, and keep coming. They even raise up their hands whenever we say, If you are giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, raise up your hand, confess your sin. They confess, but they never forsake their sins. And they keep coming six months, they're still sick. They're still oppressed. They're tired and discouraged. They're fearful. 
There is evil in their life. There is bad luck following after them. And the reason is, they have not gone ahead to do everything they ought to do. You confess, you forsake. Sin will hinder your blessing. Look at Job. Verse chapter 22. From verse 21. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his word in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. We know young men that have iniquity in their tabernacle, in their houses. Those bad pictures of naked women as iniquity, pornography, the smoking, the drinking. The house is almost like a film, it's almost like a film house with all those videos of um, bad, bad, immoral scenes, immoral things. You could almost go and watch any bad film right in their own house. And then they come here looking for blessing. If you are acquainting yourself with the Lord and you are preparing for this coming year and you want the blessings of God upon you, put iniquity far away from you because iniquity will hinder your being blessed. If I regard iniquity, if I regard, if I regard sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Many students are sending in their prayer requests and they are saying, Church, this is my church. Pray for me that I will pass my exam. Pray for me that I will be well. I'm always saying, Child, we are praying for you. But drop the boyfriend. Drop the girlfriend. And all those ways of the world that the young people are getting into the smoking in secret. And then you are still coming to church. Drop everything. If iniquity be in your hand, iniquity in your heart, iniquity in your life, drop them. Because that is the condition that God is looking for. All the sins, all the evil will hinder the blessings of God in your life. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded but ye have said that not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. I don't want God to laugh when I suffer. I don't want heaven to just laugh when I suffer. And you don't want that. But the Bible says, if you keep on in sin, if you keep on in evil, and you do not regard the commandment of God, the word of God. You keep on in secret sin, secret iniquity. You are wicked. You commit all these immoral practices that people do all around. And yet they go to church and every Sunday they confess. Every Sunday they confess. Or they come on Thursday, they just confess. They do not forsake. God will say, God is already saying, I will mock when your fear cometh. I will laugh at your calamity. And it says in verse 27, when your fear cometh as a desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, terrible and possible, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge. They hated the knowledge of their sin. The knowledge of repentance, they hated that. The knowledge of persecution, they hated that. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. I want you to look at Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Verse 9. He that turneth Proverbs 28 verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Do you know those people when the preaching of the word is going on? They go to the toilet. They don't want to listen to the word of God. Some people will not even come when you are preaching the word. They say, well, I'll be going to church. If I meet the prayer part of the service, that's enough for me. I <laughs> know that's not enough. Because the prayer part is useless if you miss the preaching part of the service. 
Those who turn away their ears from hearing the word of God, even their prayer will be abomination. Verse 13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. There are places where they will tell us that no matter what we do, no matter where we go, to those film houses, to those dancing halls, to those gambling places, anywhere we go where, just come to church on Sunday and give your money and give your tithe, blessing will come. There's nothing like that in the Bible. It says, those who cover their seas, he that covereth the sea shall not prosper, but whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. In Second Kings chapter 1, Second Kings chapter 1, from verse 2. And Isaiah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go and inquire of Beelzebub, uh, the god of Ekron, the idol of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. And say unto them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel, that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron, the idol of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. You see this man? There was a prophet nearby, Elijah, not fiery, powerful man of prayer man of god and this king became sick and instead of sending so that they can pray for him he went to idol and he sent messengers he said go and help me find out from the fortune tellers whether i will recover or not are there not people like that that are coming for blessing in the church here and i've been coming for some time hearing the word of god they hear all the testimonies they still go to the herbalist they still go to the jujuman. They still hold on to their native medicine. And then they are coming. Who they say, yes, I'm expecting blessing. Our pastor told us, your pastor, if I was your pastor, you would obey the word of God. If I, if I was your father in the Lord, you would obey what I'm saying from the Lord. But you say, our pastor, you never obey the word of the pastor. You say, our father, I know I'm a member of deeper life. Once I go to that church and they pray for me, no problem. <laughs> there is a problem, my sister. If you still go to the God of Ekron, you still go to Beelzebub, you still go to those idols, and you are worshipping the idol, you are still sacrificing, then if we pray, there will be no answer. And so Elijah went to that king and said, Is it because your God is dead? Is it because there is no God here? Is it because there is no power in that God that is said that you are going to the God of the Echons? The Lord has said, because of that evil, instead of the blessing of healing coming upon you, you are not going to come down from that bed of affliction and that bed of sickness. That's why the psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. I want you to look at Second Chronicles, chapter 15. Look at this man. From verse 16. And also concerning Miaka, the mother of Asa, the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa called down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the book Cridron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated. And that he himself had dedicated silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war until the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. Think about it. Asa the king. When he came to reign, he took away the grandmother. The Old Testament says mother, but many times the Hebrew will use the same word for mother and grandmother. But when you study the context, you say well, they, she was a grandmother. She took her away, drove her away from, the, from being queen because of idol worship and said, in this kingdom, I want to make everything right. That's what you should do, my brother. In this house, I want to set everything right. 
in this community i want to set everything right and all the items of sin all the events of sin that have been going on in that family you get rid of everything you say we're going to purify this place before christmas and before we go, before we celebrate remembrance of the coming of Jesus Christ, who came to take away all our sins, this house will be clean. This, this heart will be clean. This life will be clean. And all the idols, and all the evil, and all the things that are bad, they are taken out of the heart, and out of the life, and out of the house. That's what he did. That was very good. And the Bible says, there was no more war. My brother, my sister, there will be no more oppression. There will be no more torment when we take away sin, when we depart from evil, when we depart from iniquity. But if we remain in fornication, in adultery, we remain in sin, we remain in gambling, we remain in cheating other people, we remain in smuggling, there will be war, there will be oppression, there will be evil. But because the man took away sin, then the Bible says there was no more war, even through all that time. But look at what happened in the next chapter, from verse 7. And at that time, Ananel, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. Were not the Ethiopians and the Lunians a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. From therefore, from henceforth, Thou shalt have wars. The man that did well for 35 years, believer, listen to me. There are places you go and there are books you read that tell you that once you are saved, you are eternally secured. And no matter what you do, after you are born again, you are going to heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. Look at Israel. 35 years of peaceful reign, 35 years of prosperity. 35 years of authority and power and dominion in his kingdom. But he relaxed. And he said, well, now that I've reigned 35 years, no war, no trouble. All the trouble that came, I smashed everything, I crushed everything. Now he was relaxed and he went to be unequally yoked together with an unbeliever, an evil person. And a prophet came to warn him and said, Ananiah, or oh sorry, Asa, what have you done? You are a good king. Don't spoil your testimony. Don't ruin your life. Look at what you have done. Asa will not accept. He went ahead and relied on the strength of the unbeliever, the strength of the sinner. And the prophet said, you have done foolishly. My brother, you have been in the church 10 years. You have been saved, born again. We are going up and down together. Now because of marriage, you go to the unbeliever. You want to marry unbelievers. You are taking for granted. You are saying, well, now I know how to live. No war. There is peace. God has blessed me with prosperity. If you go to do that, according to the word of the prophet, therefore because you have done foolishly, now you will have wars, trouble. That's what the Bible says. And if you have been serving the Lord and preaching the gospel for 20 years, 25 years, 35 years, and after that we we'll go back into sin. The Lord will still punish sin, and therefore the blessing will not come. That's why we are preparing. Our preparation is not just to come, here, to come here and clap, come here and sing, come here and laugh. Our preparation is to come here and deal with sin. And I believe that this morning, if there is still sin in your life and sin in your heart, we are going to deal with that sin in Jesus' name. All the evil things you are doing, you confess them, you forsake them. And you stand upon the word of God that says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for the seed of God remaineth abiding in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. And you begin to live a righteous life. Next year will be a wonderful year. Next year will be a prosperous year. Next year will be a happy year. But, if at all this seminar, 
You still have your cigarettes that you are smoking. Your bottles of beer in the fridge. And you still have uh, the Mami Water Society that you are hiding in. And you still have all the fornication, all the prostitutes that you are doing outside. And you are saying, blessing is coming, blessing is coming. I never preach that. The Bible never says that. Blessing will come when we repent. Blessing will come when we forsake our sins. Blessing will come when we totally turn away from everything that is evil. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And by the grace of God, we are going to be holy. And when we are holy, the blessings of God will come. That woman that has been fighting will not fight again. We will say, Lord, the new year is coming. The fighting will go with the old year. And that person that has been stealing will steal no more. And we will say, Lord, a new year is coming. Stealing will go with the old year. This very day, we are going to repent and turn totally unto the Lord. And when we turn unto the Lord, blessings will come in the name of Jesus. You know some people... What they say? So that's what they say. That's what they read in the Bible. I will never come again. Now, if you don't come again, that means you don't want to repent. God is over there, and His law is that wherever you are, if you remain in sin, He will not answer your prayer. You can run back to the Catholic Church. As so are there, God is angry with the wicked every day, even right there. You can run back to the Anglican Church and say, I will never come again. If all they are talking about there is that they are telling them, confess your sins and forsake your sins. I will never come again. I will go to another place and pray. But God will not answer the prayer you pray there. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What is the solution? The only solution is to stay there where you are. Stay there where you are and say, Lord, I've come to the place where I will worship you in spirit and in truth and in holiness of life. All the sins of my life, I drop them. I want to follow after you. Then the blessings will come. In Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every wage, not some of the wage, every wage, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied of paint and paint in your mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. It says, even if it comes to losing your life, striving against sin, do it. Strive against it. Walk against it. Stand against it. Heaven is full of blessings that we need. All the blessings that we need. And God is eager to pour abundant blessings upon us. The angels are waiting. They are standing by. To bring heaven's riches to the redeemed. But there is only thing that is delaying the action of the angels. Only one thing that is de delaying. The coming of the blessings. The sin that stands between you and the blessings of God. Those are the hindrances. By the grace of God, today, we are going to get rid of all those hindrances. And when we do, the blessings will come. Not point to help, help for believers. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18. Verse 19. Come now. And let us reason together. Says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as wool. White as wool. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, are you willing today? I said, are you willing today? The Bible says, if you are willing to repent, the Lord is inviting you, come now, let us reason together. All those things we have committed, all those evil things we are doing, if you are willing and obedient, willing to repent, obedient so that you will bring forth the fruit of repentance, ye shall eat the good of the land. By the grace of God and the power of the Lord, we shall eat the good of the land. The blessings of God. The abundant blessings of the Lord. But it says, on one condition, help for believers. Believers, there is the help I have for you that you be willing and obedient. Deuteronomy, chapter 5. 
Deuteronomy chapter 5. And I'm reading verses 32 and 33. You shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Not as your flesh is leading you. Not as your mind is deceiving you. Not as Satan is tempting you. But ye shall do and observe as the Lord your God has commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you. That ye may live. And that it may be well with you. And that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. You see the blessings of God? It says, walk in the ways of the Lord. Walk in the ways of the Lord. You know when the Christian church started, all the people that said they were born again, they were walking in the ways of the Lord. They had repented of their sins, they embraced the Savior. Their lives were totally changed. They saw them and they took knowledge of them that they have been with Christ. Why? They never lied. They never cheated anybody. They never thought. You will never hear their voice outside fighting or quarreling. Angry words never came out of their mouths. They never abused their children. Neither were they stubborn or rebellious or rude to their elders in the office, in the place of work. They were gentle, they were loving, they were humble, they were submissive, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Christ. That's how Christianity started. And the blessings of God were abundant upon them. And there was not any one of them that lacked anything in the early church. No barrenness, no sickness. They were all made well. Even the shadow of Peter was healing the people on the street. Mighty, mighty things were being done. And Ananias and Sapphira tried to bring the seed, a poor Christian line, into the church. Because the church was so pure. As Peter opened his mouth, those people, they just died. And the people did not just join the church as newcomers. They really meant business. And when they came to the church, they started to live pure lives. And the blessings of God were abundant. And that's what we're saying again. That when we begin to live like the early church... And all the believers are true believers, are real believers, and there's no evil again. And ye shall walk in all the ways that the Lord has, your God has commanded you. Then you will live. I mean real life. Abundant life. And it says, it will be well with you. And then you will prolong your days in the land that the Lord has made you to possess. In Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verses 24 and 25. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God. Fear the Lord our God for our good. You know why He's commanding us to live righteous lives? You know why He's commanding us to repent? You know why He's commanding us to forsake all our sins? For our good. For our blessing. For our prosperity. For our, for our own happiness. And it says that He might preserve you alive as it is this day. And then in Second Chronicles chapter 7 verses 13 and 14 Help for believers. Believers, this is the reason we are living righteous lives. That the blessings of God will be abundant in our lives. In Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 13 If I shut up heaven that there be no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Three terrible things that God spoke about. That Solomon, you have built this temple. You have dedicated it unto me. And you are looking for blessing. And you say, what is my response to all the sacrifices that you have made, Solomon? If there is any time that there is no rain that is drought and because of that famine a terrible thing on the country two if there are locusts devouring the plants and the land terrible thing on the country or if there is pestilence a terrible plague a terrible disease that came upon all the people what's happening in our country today famine not enough food to eat not enough money to buy the food 
and then locusts, all these pests that are destroying the plants, the crops, and then three, pestilence. Three terrible things that are worrying us. What are we doing? What should we do? We're told in verse 14, he doesn't say we should just send scientists and tell them to speculate. He doesn't say we should just, uh, you know, go together and begin to fast and say continue in sin. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. If my people, and here we are this morning, people of God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Oh, you say, I don't understand. How can God say, my people, turn from their wicked ways? You don't understand? How about the people of God here? They say, I am deep alive. I am people of God. They employ people, they never pay them. And they're looking for prosperity. That's what God is saying. If my people that are called by my name, that say, I am deep alive. I belong to the church of God. I belong to the church of the Lord. I belong to Christ. And I'm going to heaven. And yet they employ people. They never pay them. If those people that are called my people will turn from their wicked ways. Don't we have ladies, women, that will fight the husbands? Even pack out from home? And then they will still say, I am deep alive. I am a child of God. But if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, don't we have members who say, I am deep alive, I am a child of God, and yet, when they begin to beat their children, you will think that that child was just a maid, not their child, and yet it is their real child. They are angry to the point that they will say, I will even kill you. Does a Christian kill? If my people that are called by my name, and they are not people that say they are children of God, ladies in the church. And then they will be roaming about, visiting brother. They never visit fellow sisters. Visiting brothers. Brother, I just said I should come and greet you. Ah, sit down there. What can I do for you? Well, uh, I have some clothes at home to wash. Can you wash them for me? Yes, I can wash them for you. And then you begin to wash brother's clothes. You are already a wife. Only you are not wedded. And when you are going after you have washed clothes and you have cooked the food, uh, brother will say, what can I do for you now? Whatever you have, you can help me. And brother will give you 15 naira. You are a girlfriend. Deep alive. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked way, only then I will hear from heaven. You know, this December, we won't go to hear our prayers from heaven. And I know he's going to hear. Because we're going to repent. I said we're going to repent. If there is iniquity, if there is evil in your hand, there's only one thing to do. That will get rid of all those iniquities, all those evil things. And God said, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. That's the blessings of the Lord. Being promised to the people that will be sincere. So the people that will really call upon God and say, God, who have offended you. God, who have gone astray. God, who have done something that is wrong. We have been wicked. And now we call upon you. And we are going to make sure that we are stretching everything that is right. And there are not people that have heard about restitution. They stole money. They have never done their restitution. Now how can God? You think, you, you stole 10 Naira before. God is willing to give you thousands of Naira. He can do it. The contracts are there. The jobs are there. All that God is waiting for is that you will be humble. And you'll go to that brother, to that sister you stole the ten naira from. And you'll say, now I'm a real child of God. And I've heard the message of the word of God. If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves, then you humble yourself. After humbling yourself, you say, I am a thief. Please forgive me. They look at you, they say, ah, but you are a brother. Oh yes, but... It was Satan that deceived me. And I yielded. Here is your ten naira. After giving that naira, ten naira, the following week, then God will give you hundreds and thousands of naira. But you hold on to the ten naira. You hold on, you don't make restitution. And you say, if I make restitution, I will be ashamed. Usher, don't be ashamed. Carrying all these uh, bags of money. And then you put some of the money. 
that the church has been given, offering, thanks and offering for the Lord. You put part in your clothes, inside your coat, and then you go away. And your heart is beating. Ordinary five naira. Or even let's say 200 naira. Let's even say 500 naira. That you stuck away just like that. Then you become poor. Then the locusts begin to eat everything in your farm, everything in your business, everything in your house. And you lose thousands of naira because of that thing you are selling. Instead of coming back, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and come from their wicked way, God says, I will forgive, I will heal their, I will heal their land. Then blessings and prosperity will come. But we say, no, I'm an usher. No, I'm a worker. I'll never confess. You remain poor. But if you confess and you forsake your sin and say, Lord, forgive me. God will forgive you. And better time will come before December, before the end of December. Let's settle all these sins. I'm assuring you, if you settle all these sins, you'll be surprised in the coming year. Mighty blessings will come upon you. Abundant blessings will come upon you. You've been unfaithful to your wife, go back to your wife and say, my wife, before the year ends, let's settle this matter. I have not been very faithful. And kneel down and settle it right there. Or before you wedded, you have been committing morality and you have deceived the church and we have wedded you. Come back to the church and say, before the year runs out, I want to get everything settled and settle your life. I'm telling you, if you do the word of God, if you obey the word of God, and you say, now I want to set everything right. At the beginning of the year, right from January, the abundant blessings of God, you will not have enough room to contain them. There will be so many. They will be so abundant. It says in, in Joshua chapter 1, and verse 8, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Only then, after repentance, only then, after you have called upon the Lord, that means you must live the overcoming life. Constant victory over temptations and over sin. If we desire fellowship and favor from God, here and in eternity, you repent, you never repented, or if you are backsliding, you really repent this time and believe on the Lord before the year runs out. But cry this morning. And then you begin to live holiness of life. This church believes in holiness, sanctification, purity of heart. Without it, no man shall see the Lord. But blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That means love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And love the people of God. He who does not love his brother or his sister, how can he say he loves God whom he has not seen? Love the people of God. And let all bitterness and hatred be taken away from you. Read and practice the word of God. Don't just be here as alone, be doers of the world. Worship God in the appointed place. Here God has called you and he has been giving you the truth. Worship God. Then pray and rely upon God completely. Forsake all idols, all native medicine, and the consulting of oracles, and the sacrificing and secret calls. Forsake everything. Reject the advice and the temptation from sinners. Become intimate with God and obedient to His word. And come back to Bethel. There is hope at Bethel. Hope at Bethel. In Jeremiah, in uh, Genesis, chapter 35. Verse 1. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. Jacob had been wandering about. And God called unto Jacob because the covenant he had with Jacob, it was at Bethel many years before. More than 20 years before. And he told Jacob now, and said, Jacob, 20 years have passed. And I gave you a lot of promises in, Je in Genesis chapter 28 that I'll bless you. I will be with you. I will prosper you spiritually, materially, in every way possible. I will shower the blessings upon you. And that time you made a vow to me. You, gave, you made a consecration unto me. 
Are you the woman about since then? You've been with Laban. Are you deceived Laban? All those times. He also deceived you. And a lot of things that happened. Now, I want to resume blessing you. I want to resume everything that I told you before. But there's one condition. Go up to Bethel and dwell there. Don't throw me about anymore. Don't go about anymore. Today in church, tomorrow, with idol worship. Today in church, tomorrow, with the gang of robbers. Today in church, tomorrow, with prostitutes. Don't throw me about anymore. Now go up to Bethel and stay there. And a blessing will come. There is hope at Bethel. If you come back to Bethel, the house of God, the house of consecration, and the place of the covenant, and the place of divine appearance and divine presence, if you come back to Bethel, he says, go to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee. When thou fledest from the face of Esau thy brother, then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. Jacob knew that all his people, they had idols, he didn't do anything about it. But now that God called him and said, Go up to Bethel, he said, Now let's settle everything. All the idols that are with you, that you are using to replace God to everything away. And let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make thee an altar unto God. Who answered me in the day of my distress. And was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hands. And all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by shaking, and they journeyed, and then the terror of God was upon the cities where, which were loud about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob immediately, even at the time they were going, going out to Bethel, the blessing had started already. And I'm believing God from this very day. Mighty blessings will start in your life in Jesus' name. But let's go back to Bethel. The place of consecration. Those of you have been in the church for 10 years, for more than 10 years, 7 years, 6 years. You remember your consecrations of days gone by. Your obedience of days gone by. Your devotion of days gone by. Your submission of days gone by. Your holiness of days gone by. But you have lost them. The seriousness. The zeal of the Lord. The purity of heart. But you have lost them. Come back to Bethel. Before we get to this new year, renew those consecrations again. And say, Lord, I am back to Bethel. And all the strange gods and all the earrings and all those other things that are replacing God in your own heart. Throw everything away. And say, Lord, now I am in business with you. And the blessings of God will flow in an abundant manner. God himself has said, I will make a covenant of peace with them and there shall be showers of blessing. Are you expecting those showers of blessing? Let's repent. Don't say, well, I'm still a child of God. Still repent. The holiness standard you have dropped, you need to repent of that. The consecration you are forsaking, you need to repent of that. The careless words you are not speaking, you need to repent of that. The prayerlessness, you need to repent of that. Your life is not like it was before. You need to come back to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to come back to Bethel. There's only one place there is hope at Bethel. If we don't come back to Bethel, to the original consecration, it will be a terrible thing. But we must come back and say, Lord, here we are today. We are back at Bethel, the place of consecration, and vow once again. Let's rise up and tell the Lord. And seek the face of the Lord. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. Humble themselves. Humble themselves. Are you so proud? Humble themselves. And pray. We cannot pray if we are not humble. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. From their lying. From their hypocrisy. From their stealing. 
Oh, then I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. The blessings are coming, but get ready. Repent. Come back to Bethel. And seek the face of the Lord. There's iniquity in your hand. There's sin in your life. Pride in your life. Put it far away from you. And prepare for the blessings of God. Don't hinder your blessing. Are you committing adultery? Fornication? Do you deal with pornography? The gambling? Unrighteous? If my people which are called by my name, do you fight? Do you cheat your employers and your employees? Are you not stubborn or rebellious? If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, confess their sin, forsake their sin, turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. I will bless them. In Jesus' name. Almighty God, we really thank you this day because you love us. And that is why you are spoken unto us as children. Eternal Lord God, I pray that as many as may be in their sin, all of us, I'm asking you, in any form, whatever, or those who have backslidden in time past, they have known you, but they have gone back out of their consecration. 